those two pixels and do a subtraction. So now you send them to the subtraction unit, which is in a thing called an ALU, an arithmetic logic unit. It does the subtraction, and then it says it, here's your answer. So now you take the answer and you put it over here. Now you go do that for the next pixel. You understand when you're talking about thousands and thousands of calculations, this is going to take a ton of time. When I designed the, the SSD unit, okay, I said, I know what I'm doing. We're taking pixels, we're taking um, an image of this size. Go to the DRAM, <coughs> bring me a whole line, okay? And then I put a whole line of subtractors. Do it all at once, okay? Now save it and do it again. While I'm saving it, go and get the next two lines, okay? And then I have buffers that are storing them. In, I have enough buffers that in the time that it takes to go get those lines, I've done all the calculations, and now I bring in the next lines. They're already waiting for me. You understand? So I waste no time. Okay, so now that's, that was IQ1. All of the algorithms were designed not in, or, or implemented not in these special processors, but in fixed hardware. You know, Andres said, make a tracker, I made a tracker. He said, you want to multiply 10 numbers? I put 10 multipliers. You know, you want to do an image this size? Okay, I always go to the memories and I get these things like this, okay? What happened was that after a year and a half, while we're busy designing the chip, so the algorithms people are busy fixing their algorithms, doing new things, making faster, better, whatever. And then we said, oh, but our chip is done. You can't change the algorithm. We, this is how, you told me this is what you want to make. We made it, right? So then we said, oh, we have a problem. We need to be able to have programmable units, okay? So then we designed what's called the VMP. This is a vector microprocessor. And it works. Like you tell it, I'm going to use, I need a, an image this big, so it goes to the memory and it knows to get that size of an image and start working on it in parallel. It doesn't do like this thing, <coughs> one pixel at a time, it works on a vector. You tell me how many things you want to do at once and I do them all at once, okay? Now, this is programmable, which means it's still, it's not like the way I designed it, you know, you need 10 multipliers, there are 10 multipliers. No, okay, there's five multipliers, you need to do it twice, okay? So it works. Fast, not, not as fast as fixed hardware, but certainly not as slow as general hardware. Okay, so, so IQ2 had some VMPs and also the fixed hardware that, that we had done. IQ3 said, you know what, we'll put more of these things so they're working in parallel and get rid of the fixed hardware. And IQ4 said, let's put even more of these and let's make a few <laughs> others that do all kinds of specific calculations that we need. This is what makes Mobileye unique. What, now, it's not just that we have these nice, fancy image processors. It's because in this building are the same people who are developing algorithms, are the same people who are writing the code, are the same people who are designing the hardware. We're all working together. There isn't, some, there isn't a company like that. You understand? The, the algorithms people are defining for the hardware what to do. The software people are saying, listen, I can do like this. Give me an instruction that implements like this. So, all of these people are coming together and they're defining the hardware to do it. Okay, so even if you take um, a great company like NVIDIA that knows how to do image processing, okay, they're making hardware. They're making hardware. They, somebody else has to come and write software. Someone has to come and say, oh, okay, we'll use this like this and we'll use this like this. No, we're saying, the software people said, I need to do this and this. Give me hardware that does, that does it. You understand? So that's that's beside the fact that we've been in the industry for 15 years doing only this, okay, we are doing the development of our hardware based on what the software and algorithms people tell us to do. We're not just making hardware that we think, oh wow, wouldn't it be nice to multiply 10 numbers at a time, okay? Not to okay. sound like condescending or anything, but that secret sauce seems like it's very easily replicated in another company. Like another company could look at Mobileye and say, that's a very good best practice. Let's merge Let's the hardware the same, and the software yeah. Absolutely. together. Absolutely. I mean, obviously they can't catch up on the time that we've been doing the development, right. but in terms of the actual way that we're structured in the software and hardware feed, teams right. are feeding off each other. Right. So I guess the question is, is it, why do we not see more companies that are competing with us because we've been, we, we're, I mean, that. because we've been in this business for a long time, and only now people are waking up to this. And yes, there are going to be companies that are going to start doing this, and are going to start putting together teams that will start doing it. Okay. okay. I mean, um, Intel just bought a image processing company. Okay. It's a handful of, of Russians that are advertising on their website. They they do 
FCV, FCW, uh, lane keeping assist, that they have all these algorithms and now Intel just brought them in. And so, and Intel has the hardware. <coughs> and so, they're working on it. You're right. People are going to get to this. But okay. so far, they haven't. Okay. Intel is right? Excuse me? Intel here. No. Oh. Can we say it's a modular design? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, uh, look, you know, you can, we, when we did, when we did this development, so we decided we'll put this many. The fact is that originally we had intended to put more PMAs, but because of the place and rod and the constraints, so we dropped the sizes. Also, look here. This works at one gigahertz. This works at one gigahertz. What happened? Works at 750 megahertz. Okay. There are constraints in the design that you end up having to deal with. And, uh, and so, all of that comes into effect, but yeah, it's modular. You can pull things out, you can slow things down, you can speed things up. Um, so marketing-wise, you can't say it's a modular design. This, this is my concern. I'm in front of customers, you can't say it's a modular. I mean, mo modular just means that it's, it has numbers of components and you can change them at, at will. So yeah, modular. Yeah. yeah. Well, can you say another sentence Almost about the, like you said the difference between us and say Nvidia Almost that they yeah. only did hardware. And, because I think that's helpful, like, you know, when people ask us about the advantage or disadvantage with other companies that do similar or... Yeah. Can you say, again, like, what the difference is? Yeah, so what I'm saying is that, that a company like Engine is developing, is developing um, uh, image processing hardware or, you know, you know video, video or graphic um, processors, okay? So they know how to deal with images and they know, you know, how to make command sets that, that are are efficient to do uh, video processing, but they aren't making specifically for the kinds of things that we're doing. I mean, we have algorithms that need to do very specific things, and so we've developed hardware that allows our software people, and it's our software, it's our, we have our own operating system, we have our own code that has our own instruction sets, okay, that do exactly what we need to do, okay, and so they, so again, other companies will probably go in this route. But today, we are the largest company that has algorithms, software, and hardware all being developed together. Okay. Is there anything customized with the various contracts with OEMs? Some will have you know, just specific features, others will have others. As long as it's, let's say, within IQ4 or IQ3, the hardware is the same and we just alter the um, software? Absolutely. The yeah, absolutely. There's, there's, um, I mean, there are many programs today on IQ3 that are doing AUB. They're doing, you know, automatic emergency braking, and that's it. But you can do lane keep assist, you can do traffic slider so, you can do all so the hardware. Really is like IQ3 is IQ3 no matter what, and they're customizing the solution in the software. Exactly. Yeah, and again, that's why, you know, this, the, these programmable units allow that, you know? And then it's, and then it's a matter of how many things you can do at once. Okay, that's why these things need to be super fast. Okay, because they're, they're doing many things. A stupid question then on that. Yeah. If you have an IQ3 platform which has the ability to do multiple functionality and you have an OEM who's just doing AEB, does that mean the AEB would be more efficient than an OEM who's using five capabilities? No, <clears throat> because either, either it works or it doesn't. It, it, I mean, that's, that, you know, AEB needs to work and if you if you overload the system so that now it works it doesn't it works partially you can't have partial AEB. Maybe you can get something, you know, a few more frames per second or something like what's that. What's that? He's asking maybe you can like crunch in a few more frames per second or something. Like, like would it be work? Not that it doesn't work, but it's working more efficiently. Um, no, it doesn't work more efficiently. The only thing that ha the only thing I could say that's different is the power consumption of the chip, and it could be that the, the chip will overheat, you know, or. or um, you know, it, it drains more power, but uh, you know, in terms of working more efficiently, I, I can't say that. So it's always, so I have one more question. So it's always one chip that we're putting into the vehicles, and then depending on what the OEM wants, that code can be multiple code for either the AEB, the LEB. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Unless, always one except chip. Except for autonomous <coughs> uses multiple chips. Okay, right? how many well, chips why, does why autonomous use? Like, uh, as far as I know, there's, there's uh, as far as I know, we're doing, we have like a triple camera in front, and we have, and it's feeding two or three um, IQs. Okay. Two, two IQs. Two, two, okay. How they Why is this industry actually worried about power consumption? I mean, here in the mobile right. industry, right. you're yeah, worried. very concerned about battery and power, right. but in, uh, in... Because, because in of uh, heat. Because of heat. Only because of heat. Right. 
He's he's just, I know. He's just a patient. Yeah, because we're on the windshield and we have to be in you know automotive uh, temperature frame, otherwise we have to shut down. If you guys using water cooling right now. Right, which is insane. Yeah, which is insane. <laughs> what are they using? How much of a liquid cooling on the system is the system. fact that that PME only works at point seven five? <clears throat> how, what, how does it affect the overall system? I mean, uh, you could say that it doesn't do as much as many things as we want. So if we're trying to overload many, many applications, it could be that that will be a limiting That's factor. A yeah, at, some, at some point, we'll have to say, oh, we, we can't do anymore. Okay. And when you're adding, for autonomous, when you're adding numerous IQ chips, yeah. what's the interface that allows it to communicate in real time? Um, or each one will, is, is each chip acting independently or are they constantly? They talk to each other. Yeah, no, they talk to each other and there's, there, there has to be, you know, also in, even in a single chip system, even in a single chip system, um, you, have the, you have the IQ talking to an MCU. An MCU is like a microcontroller unit that's in charge of the, whole the overall. Thing, yeah. In fact, we say, we're just, we recommend you put on the brakes. We didn't say brakes. We said, we think it's a good idea to put on the brakes. Now the MCU says, okay, are all the voltages okay? Are the temperatures okay? Um, did, did, this come, did this command that I got come with the right frame count? Did, maybe it's a screwball command. They, they decide, yes, this is a good command, and now they go and say brakes. Okay, so the same thing in the, in the autonomous, there's an MCU, at least one, that's, that's making the final decisions and sending the commands to the system. So uh, does the MCU control us? Like the MCU need to also check us, test if Mobileye brain is still working. Still yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the, there's also I mean now we're getting into the aspect of safety, yeah. and that's true. There's many there's many different uh, things that we do in order to ensure that that the comp that the chip is still working safely, and so. Um, you know, the, the ideally you would have redundant systems, but you can't, you can't, no one can afford to do that, or at least at this point nobody wants to put two chips that in and working redundantly. So there's all kinds of mechanisms that we put in place that, that like there's a thing called challenge and response. The, the, the uh, MCU gives us a number. Okay, it says here, we challenge you with this number, here's a five. And they know that we're gonna take that five and we're gonna go through 10 routines, you know? And if you and in routine one we're going to add five, and routine two we're going to times by two, blah blah blah. So at the test. end we have to return them a number a hundred. So now if they get the hundred, so they know that we went through this, the, the, all the process. If they don't get it, so they know something got messed up, so and now it's time to check what's going on. Is there a, is there a requirement for the AV at least or the emergency braking for hardware redundancy? Uh, no, there's not. There's there's no requirement for hardware redundancy. There is a requirement to stand. Um, to comply with the what's called ASIL, Automotive Safety Integrity oh. Level. And so, you know, that's basically what I've been doing for the past few years is, is trying to make sure that we, 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 we comply, comply with, this, with these numbers. And, and so we do all kinds of things. Just to give you an idea for A and B, so what we do is we don't have two chips, but we have the final routine that actually says break. That routine is done twice in two pieces of hardware. It'll be done like it, it'll be done like say, in what one one VMP will calculate it one way, one VMP will calculate it another way, and then it's compared. Okay, so it's sort of like a virtual redundancy in the chip okay. to make sure that we did the break. Yeah. Can I ask you? Um, I don't know if it's marketing talk, but we've been told that the IQ5 will allow for um, other inputs rather than just the mobile eye camera. Yeah. Um, that so will that then? be taking the role of an MCU as basically no. checking everything, or um, how does that interact? At, at this, I mean, it's possible. Okay, yeah, we are having like radar inputs and, any, and all kinds of other different sensor inputs. And so it's possible that we could take that role. As far as I know, we still aren't gonna do that and there will still be an MCU uh, externally. But yeah, the idea with IQ5 is to be able to support autonomous vehicles and so, um, you know, there's a lot of redundancy built into the system, built in, but not, and it could be that people will use two, it's, we're not sure yet. I'll take you back to a basic question. When we present, I'm, I'm at least personally, I'm not sure what, how to call mobile action. 
is it a microcontroller? Is it a microprocessor? Is it a DSP? Is yeah. it an image processor? How, right. What's yeah, the correct? I mean, look, all of those, all of those names are, are, are okay, it, right? Yeah. I mean, I would call it an image processor, but you know, because that's that's basically what it does. It's, I, I mean, a CPU is also a general term yep. for a, a, you know, a computing computation unit. Um, usually, when they say the difference between a CPU and an MCU is that the CPU is a central processing unit, and so that's like one of these blocks that does, like I said, you know, A plus B, go get me this data, that that's data, CPU. okay? An MCU is a microcontroller unit, which means that it has not only CPUs, but it has all kinds of peripherals, right? So we have tons of peripherals, and so you could call it an MCU. On the, on the other hand, you know, these things, D, DSPs are basically digital signal processors, and they're, and they're usually um, focused on very specific computation-intensive uh, um, processing. And so we sometimes refer to these things as DSPs, right? I mean, we call them here accelerators. They speed up the calculation process. I mean, at the end of the day, I, I, would, I would call this an image processor because that's what it was designed to do. Okay. All right, so now once, you, once you've designed the chip, you've done the back-end stuff, so now you need to actually make the physical chip, okay? And the way to make the physical chip is you, you, you have to put, basically put all those transistors that we talked about. That's what the chip is. It's transistors and wires, okay? And so this is what the chip, each one of these things here is a chip, okay? And this, it's made on a giant circle that's called a wafer, okay? And on the wafer, there are hundreds of chips. Now, this wafer actually has many different types of chips that you can see. I mean, if, our wafer actually makes one chip, the IQ, right? So there's these squares that are all identical, they're all made on one thing, and what you do is you dice it, you, you take this special knife that cuts the wafer into the chips, or basically it's a, called a die, okay? Now you take that die, and you have to put it in a package, all right? And so now there's different types of packages. The first one is called here BGA, okay? The BGA is a ball grid array, you have all these balls that connect, so like this could be the interface to the, to the camera, and this could be the interface to the DRAM. You know, you have to be able to connect to all these different things in the world, all right? So now you have this BGA wire bond package. What happens is, is that this is the dot, okay? This is the piece of chip that we cut out, and on it, it has these pads. So for example, we said we want to talk to the camera, all right? So these are the camera pins. And these are the camera pads on the die. We need to be able to connect them, so we do what's called wire That's bonding. It's very, very small. Very, What's that? Very, it's very, 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 very small. Right. So now here you can see the wire bonding, okay? These are all these gold wires. The die is here, connecting from the pads to these pads and then to the ball grid array below, okay? So now, this is one way to make a, a chip, but the <coughs> problem is, is that now with IQ 3 and 4, we made the chip even smaller. If you take a look here, so the processes in IQ1 was based on 100 nan 180 nanometers, IQ2 went to 90 nanometers, IQ3 40, IQ4 28 nanometers. What do these nanometer things mean? Basically, they, they, they refer to the, to the width of the gate of that transistor, that switch that we talked about. Okay, that's the basic element in the chip. So this is how small you can make that thing. Okay, and so you see that we're getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Also, this refers to the, the width of the wires. So the smallest wire is basically re related to the smallest gate size. So what you can see, though, is that, look, IQ2 cut in half the size of those, you know, that basic okay. element. And again, <coughs> even more in IQ3 and in IQ4 almost, right? Every time we're cutting in half the and size. When you say FDSI, it's a, it's a new voltage. Yeah. Right, right. It's uh, yes, exactly. It's um, it's a silicon on on insulator. It's a different type of process, but um, and it's supposed to be as you can see, it's smaller and it's faster. Now, what happens is that when you start shrinking the die, okay, you have a benefit because now if everything's so much smaller, so now everything get, connects much faster. So that's one of the reasons that we're able to go up in speed, right? So, so if we want to go smaller, you can put more things, they connect much closer, much faster, but now there's no room to put wires. There's no room to put all these pads here. So how, what are you going to do? So they, de they developed a, a technology called flip chip, okay? So we're still in a, in a BGA where you have these ball grid array, 
but it's not wire bonding. You take the chip where you had all these pads that you needed to connect, and you flip it, all right? And now you make little balls from those pads to this board. And now this goes to all these, so the, this is now the video interface that's going to these video interface pins. It's like a PCB inside. Exactly. So now this is a very small PCB, and that, I think, brings us well, almost to the next section. So now, um, to make the chip, there's many different stages where they do wafer inspection, testing. Uh, there's all kinds of different um, systems, and all of these things, all this, all this basically um, processing and sorting, packaging, testing, all of this is done by ST. We don't really have anything to do with it other than we, we um, supply them certain information about the chip in order to be able to do it. Okay. How many pins do we have today? Um, I'm not sure, I don't remember the exact number. Yeah. Okay, so now the next step is to actually make the board. Um, to make a board, you have to design in schematics. You draw, like this is the chip, this is the IQ interface, it has for the, for, the, for the DRAM, you have the data, the control signals, you draw yourself the, the symbol for the actual um, memory, and you have to connect everything up. There's all kinds of places for errors here. Everybody has to make sure they did the right thing. However, if somebody made a mistake here, okay, we'll make a new board. Okay, it takes a few weeks, it takes a few thousand dollars. It's not like making a new chip. You don't want to make a mistake, but it's not the end of the world. Okay. All right. Um, now, once you do the, the, once you do your schematics, you also have to do like we do in a chip. You do place and route. Here's the IQ. Here's some. Here's the MCU. You want to place the DRAM very close because it's sensitive. So all of these, you do all this placement of the board, and then the, and then there's an automatic. Uh, a uh, tool that basically wires up everything, connects everything the way you said in your schematic. That's a PCB design. Huh? Yeah, this is the PCB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, this is what a PCB looks like, for those of you who haven't seen it, right? You have basically, um, if we look here, so there's this green mask to make, to make sure that you only solder where the, the metal is. Okay, so these are all these gold pads. Um, the wires connect on one layer, and they may need another layer. There's, their PCBs are made up of several layers, right? Because you have a lot of wires that need to go to one place, but on one layer, there's not enough room. So you need to go to another layer. So you use what's called vias. This is a via, and it's, a, it's basically a metal link that now goes to another layer where there's room to make uh, more signals. If you have a very complicated board, you can have, you know, 10 layers. Some simpler boards have four layers. It depends on you know what you need, what your you know, complexity of your design. Also, you need to make sure that you have like ground layers and VCC layers. You put in like a plane because once you have all these signals running, you start making noise. And so, if there's all these signals running very fast, they start talking to each other. And now you can screw up all the communications. So you need to be able to make sure that that the wires are at a certain distance from each other, that between the planes, you know, the signals run in one direction, the signals run in another direction, there's ground planes that provide insulation from noise. All these things are taken into account in the, in the design of the PCB. Um, after that, you need to put the chips on the board. Okay, now there's, there's, a, there's a couple different ways that you can do that. One is manually placing it, you put it down and then you solder them. Um, the other one is that there's these big machines that they know what your board looks like and they do pick and place. They have a stacks of chips and automatically takes it, puts it where it needs to go. Um, there's things called sockets, which are basically allowing for you, instead of putting the chip directly on the board, so you put it in a socket. That allows you to change things. If something went wrong, you can take it out and just put a new one in. Also, this is the socket that we use for IQ. It's a huge, very expensive socket. And so the good thing is, about using sockets is that if something went wrong, you just take it out and put a new one. The bad thing is, is that this is this costs more than the chip, right? Yeah. And and also it takes up a lot of space. Also, it'll make the chip hot. It can it can screw up the the timing. And so you use it only just for testing. What do we do here? And what do you mean? Do we design the board here? Yeah, we have a board so that we design. Manual or assembly? Um, we do it manual as far as I know. Because we're only you're, we're only making a few boards. And, you know, you use the you use the automatic assembly when you're making many boards, like in production. And ST does that. 
Um, well, no, no, no we're not. No, ST makes the chip. The chip itself. So who does the board? And so we make we make a small test board. Okay, we make a few of them, right? And and then all the all the tier ones make them. TRW, <coughs> okay, style, that's right. they make the boards. We check them. They use our design as a sample. They make small changes. We are also we, using boards for for here for, for tests. For that's that's right. 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 So we're supplying the tier ones the, the IP chip that they put on the boards that they make. Exactly. We sell chips Got at it. the end of the day. So who to manufactures the, the board for the aftermarket? Is that in China? No, uh, subcontractors. Subcontractors. Right, but I mean, but it's group. That's a lot yeah, of no, no, we're, I guess the aftermarket group is responsible for it. I mean, Arcadi yeah. and, Arcadi and Arcadi friends, friends yes. and Amir. It's in China. It's and, in China. There's, there's an Israel as well. Few yeah. of them. Yeah. It's called. Okay, and then and then in terms of the soldering of yes. putting that actual chip onto the board, so you can do it manually, like you see this guy's doing. You take a piece of solder and you take that soldering iron, which is very hot, and you melt the solder and it connects the, the pins. Okay, you can see a picture here also. But to do things faster, there's a thing called wave soldering. This is a wave solder machine. You take your board, you put you put all the chips that you need in place, and then and you send you. This is a, like a bath. Of molten solder, it's very hot. They send a wave through, and the solder basically hits all the metal points. You know, skips over where it's green, and everything gets soldered in a flash. That's awesome. um, and so now that's basically. I think we went through the whole process from you know logic design, digital design, analog design, chip design, board design, assembling it all. At the end of the day, the future nice is here. And you'll get a BMW at the end of the day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. That's a nice one. If, uh, if an OEM has a chip that um, is using mobile like, uh, for some reason, you said is, is it malfunctioning or something? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's malfunctioning. And they'll get the material.